so I don't really read that much Otome. I think it's still in the low single digits and something I was interested in trying. For the random person that doesn't know, the Otome genre is catered to women, but also the main characters is female. It's not my main field, so I don't really know how these are compartmentalized. I read one or two titles catered to women by accident and the plot is generally pretty cool, but since the main character was a man, it somehow doesn't count as an Otome. There's some titles I've read that are close to the all ages with a hint of like BL, but at the same point, is it catered to BL fans at this point or is it just more general feminine audience? Who knows? Overall, I don't really care since I just care about the plot or the interactions between characters. I feel like they put more effort for the background scenarios, but that's probably just the popular ones that just got localized. There might just be as much of an overabundance of high school backgrounds in these genres as well. Honestly, it's mostly marketing, but I just find it fucking lazy. I wrote my notes on the first Psychedelica before I got to read Bust the Fellows or even the second title of Psychedelica, simply because these two titles were like $7 each. Bust the Fellows fares better, but I still had fun with these two. More so on the first one, but the second one has its own merits, and I'll get to that later. The second one is a loose sequel to the first one, so it's kind of weird how to go about it. So I think I'm just going to talk about the first one, then I'll talk about the second one, and then the spoilers for each. So for Black Butterfly, the protagonist wakes up in a mansion without her memories. There's monsters around and she finds other people pretty fast and they just find their safe room. They can't leave the mansion and it's always raining at night. They also get assigned to hunt down these monsters to get these crystal shards and in return they get their memories back alongside a way to get out of the mansion and that's just the gist of it. It was kind of fun for like the first half. It just turned kind of boring afterwards and it's because the fun nature of just having these shitty brats just interacting with each other eventually stops and it focuses on the routes character. Except that half of these routes aren't that good even in an objective level like I know a guy that hates most of these kind of dramas so he'd hate like a specific character but the overall steps of that route is fine compared to some of these other ones that just are outright bad and I'll talk about that in like the small spoiler sections. So there's a couple characters in here and I already see that some of these are probably like overused archetypes. You got the angry loner boy Yamato, the hard ass Hikage, the dainty sophisticated Kagiha, the energetic smart ass Karasuba, and this weird airhead Manshiro, right? There's lock scenes that need to be seen in order to get these certain endings. There's scenes with all of them interacting with each other, some where it's just a one-on-one -on -one combo, or there's some with there's like the protagonist and like two characters, where they're just bickering about some irrelevant topic, but overall it's a fun time. You unlock them by using these points that you get from doing the shooting minigame, which you'd think would be a reoccurring gimmick throughout most of these chapters, but they're barely in the VN. Which is weird since that's kind of part of the plot, but I guess a lot of it just gets handled in the background. And I'm not saying that's a horrible idea, I can see it being rather monotonous after a while. But then you might as well skip the gimmick altogether where you could just show an action scene and that'd be it. Anyways, you do the mini game, you get the points, and then you unlock the scenes. The extra scenes are probably my favorite sections in the VN, since everybody's interacting with each other, like I found Karasuba enjoyable when he's around, Yamato and the other characters and he's shit talking everybody, it's fine. But his solo scenes were probably the large scenes in an overall decent VN. He just doesn't got much going on. I feel like that's a problem with a good chunk of them, it's just more apparent with Karasuba. Getting in is kind of annoying half the time since you basically have to start from the beginning each time. Let's say in Yamato's case he has two endings and you did his first ending before the good ending and I think you need to do the normal ending before you even get those. So I reload a chapter behind and you're just like, okay now I'm in Yamato's but no fuck you, you got the normal ending again and the whole thing's like well you have to start from the beginning and do all the scenes again and then you understand the character is. And this happened before again one other time with Karasuba where hey I did his first ending, okay let me load back the choice do it and you get the good ending and it's like no you got the normal ending again it's like what the fuck so you have to go all the way back again and do all these things i guess what they do is they wipe out all the choices after one ending so you, you know eh, whatever for the routes i'd give mature a low eight hakagi a high seven and the normal ending yamato has like a middle seven and those were in my notes and i'm kind of wondering why i have yamato lower than hakage when i remembered having a lot more fun with that character and i think it's because hakage is kind of on its own branch so it's breath of fresh air but more so that it interacted with different characters and i just had a better experience with it it also helps that i read after karasuba's route too karasuba and kagiha are just failures for different reasons and I'm not sure what I'd give them, but I'll talk about in the spoilers. All in all, the plot setting is pretty cool, but they also don't really do much with it after a while. It felt more like it lost its steam the longer it went on. I felt the final chapters to be its weakest points and it was kind of boring. It was more like they were trying to figure out how to resolve everything. 
Depending on your drama tolerance, you might have some trouble with the specific route. It's really by the books, but it's written well. I'm not sure if it was that one or Yamato that was my favorite, but it's one of those two. So for Ashenhawk, it's the second title. It's now a town filled with snow. It used to be a trade town, but the snow kind of ruined everything. To the point, it's kind of a pain to even leave for a different town at all. The intro starts out strong, but it dies out soon after. The, the protagonist is a girl that dresses as a guy due to his eyes sometimes turning red when he's emotional. Basically, there's a myth that goes if you see a lady with a red eye, she's the witch and she's gonna fuck up the whole town, so you have to kill her. I thought this would be more akin to like the Salem game where you have to gaslight the people or on what transpired, but it's not really the case. I didn't find the characters this time around all that charming and their interactions are more generic than in the previous title, but mainly in the sense that most of these guys are already attracted to the character. Some from the beginning and some when she's not dressing like a guy. I, f I find it pretty boring even in a Moe game, so a bunch of guys isn't going to improve how I feel about it. Not like that wasn't a thing in the first title, but at least it wasn't everybody. Personally, I, I liked Levy the least and Ashnok the most. Most of them were at least slightly interesting, but Lucas was put higher than the rest and it's kind of fair because he felt like he was the main character. There's actually a few characters that are from the first title and those were also fun but I'll bring those up in the spoilers. I think it was chapter 2 that goes on for way too long and it's because all the exposition comes from there, most of the character interactions come from there, parts of the setup and how the main character works is from there. It's mainly a complaint on why it couldn't be split into two parts because chapter 2 is as long as like the next three chapters put together. So after that chapter, it's for the most part a kinetic experience, the amount of options drastically diminish, it's not like a flag or two and I'm wondering if most of these are even necessary because you might just be able to get any route just by the choices of the last chapter. I don't think you even need any of the interaction scenes, just the mandatory story scenes and maybe this was their way to fix how much you had to redo from the first title. Honestly it's kind of written well but in the sense that with some slight changes this could just be a normal like young adult fantasy novel. It ends strong to the point that it's somewhat close to one of my old favorite animes from like 10 or 15 years ago when I used to watch it a decent bit. Overall, like kind of a weaker experience. They both have strong starts, but this one's kind of meandered around for a while and then just ended strong. And for me, yeah, you need all three. It retread some old topics from the first title and did those well. Some of the happy ending stuff here kind of fixed some of the kind of whatever sections in the first title's happy ending. Basically, I found the true ending to be done better than what was in the first, but the actual routes are a lot weaker considering it's much closer to kinetic experience. It's like 95% of the same for each route except for like some extra routes that I think you unlock after you get the first ending or maybe even the true ending. I'd say my favorite route ending outside of the finale is probably the Vons and then the solo ending where everything gets fucked up. Overall those extra endings that get unlocked later just cover like the final topics still going around in your mind of like oh how does this work and how is there what about this character they, they fill all that out. It's a fine addition it works out well. So for the two titles combined, I had a lot of fun. Not the greatest, and honestly, I probably got a few dozen titles in my backlog that I'd like more, but as a way to at least give a couple more tries into a genre I'm not used to, had a good time, and I already got like a few more titles that I'd try, though I'm kind of worried that I was like, what if all of these ones are the good ones and all the old are shit? But you know, that's how everything goes. It's when you first start out, that's how it is. And who knows, like, what, what if my words are right and they're all kind of shit, or the, at least like the three I'm looking at are kind of shit. Hey, uh, three videos of me nagging and I'll have fun, maybe you won't. On another note, I think both of these could be pretty decent anime titles. I don't know if they will sell well or even watch well, but it's like, well, they're all guys and everything, but overall it would be interesting. And this is when you should drop off unless you don't care or you already read part of it or as it gets, whatever, right? And it, all of it is because I'm going through the late game stuff, mainly some of the characters. I liked the normal ending, everything made sense and it ended well, but the second ending for Yamato and Kara Super kind of whatever since it's somewhat appended to the normal ending. There could have been some very slight alterations in the last conflict, but nope. And since I'm already on the topic, I pretty much dislike Harasuba. He's kind of a creeper. He's funny as one of the group, but he's just a bunch of red flags once you mix romance with him. He's honestly a whiny bitch. At least Yamato just has a rough exterior cliche, so he's a cool dude after he softens up a bit. Akiha doesn't really have an ending, and it makes sense since he's actually dead. I thought they were going to do some ass pull ending like, oh yeah, she had amnesia in the real world since they never found his body, but they made him stay dead and they just live in the mansion. And what I meant by him not really having an ending is it's like five minutes long. I actually don't mind what they're going for, it's fine, it was just really abrupt. 
there's a happy ending where they're all alive, but that's kind of a cop out. It's still nice, and I don't think the game itself is going with the hey, this is the actual ending you have to go for. And that kind of got reinforced with the second title. Hakage is kind of funny because he's kind of acts like an old man and he has some outdated ways of socializing, only for him to be a guy that shot himself ages ago that was just stuck in the mansion. And that's why I put him as a 7th, because he alone isn't the most interesting, but similar to the case of Sunohara and the gang in Clannad, where the route is interesting because of an amalgamation of all the characters instead of just one character. I liked Moshiro's route the most, yeah it had the most soap opera drama in the whole VN, but it was still pretty good. I think Yamato's branch has to be finished before even be able to go to this one, and that makes sense since he's part of the backstory comes from there. I feel like it's also where the protags VA performs her best, and Moshiro's plot picks up a previous bad ending and uses that as part of a setting and I generally really appreciate when that happens because normally when there's a bad end it's like okay yeah bad end and it never gets brought up again or there's like a topic there where it's like oh in this ending you die because he used a special move but then you never see that special move ever again in any of the new routes or in the continuation of the plot like, what the hell happens to that and in this one's like no it's there and yeah, I liked it a lot it was fine so the main thing on the second one is that the parts I found most interesting weren't about the main cast, but what was happening in the setting overall, and that mostly pertains to Ash and Hawk and the two residents of the church. Lawrence is obviously Kageha from the first title, and Eric is almost as obvious with him being Hikage, but for some reason he has blonde hair this time around. Like if the rabbit wasn't there, I thought it might have been a fusion of Karsu and Hikage. Fun fact is that Elric is voiced by that guy who did Kurosawa, right? And it's kind of like, ah, uh, okay, why? It's like, why? Well, I don't know why he has blonde hair, but well, I'll get to it later. They actually don't have much relevance to the plot. They're mostly like plot devices to move a couple of key aspects or explain how X and Y happened. Like three quarters way through, it's like, okay, the main character can't leave the church or the place overall all that much. So Elric goes around and contacts the people. It's like, oh, that's what Elric is for. But overall, like, oh, what's Elric in the main schemes? Nothing. They're, I don't know why they're there. It could have been two other guys, right? But because they're in the town, you can see that the town is a normal one. It's probably another dreamscape or whatever they called it in the first one. That just gets further tacked on with Hugh, who from what I can tell is the original butterfly. His ending is basically revolves around it and that he can finally find a new butterfly to be with, which is the main character of this one. But in the finale, he's basically the story weaver. Still the butterfly, right? And he's finally done with everything and he's finally, you know, he shed his fucking skin, he's back to being butterfly and just goes back to his old mate. He's like, oh, series is ending. It's done. Cool. This is great. Oh, actually, I never mentioned it. So in Butterfly in the first one, the whole thing is like there's this whole kaleidoscope thing that that's what all the crystals are for. It joins up and it makes a wish. The whole thing is Hikage, right? Hikage's sister was dead because, you know, well, she had a sickness and they couldn't cure her in time. So she wanted to get the kaleidoscope to, you know, cure her. And then so I forget what happened and he got pissed off and broke it and shot himself. That's why he died. So now he's in the mansion and he's trying to get the kaleidoscope back so he can get the sister back or something like that. So throughout the whole thing, there's this whole butterfly theme in there where there's I think one of them dies and the other one travels around the world and he's they're both white butterflies but he travels so much that all his colors get trans transposed into like the rest of the world so everything has color except him out and he became like a black butterfly and then he just dies or some shit like that it's been a well while since I read it's, it's been like four months I think but uh you know that's what happened so this is why Hugh was here it's like oh he was the original butterfly and now he's also dying well he's not he chose to die I guess right he, he shed his skin Anyways, it was really heartwarming how it was done. The protagonist also ended up being Ai's friend from the first VN. Elric and Lawrence show up too, but as reincarnations instead of whatever they were doing in the first title. And it also looks like Kageha is kind of interested in Hikage's sister, and I hate how their names are so similar and it pisses me off. For some reason, uh, Hikage's hair is back to normal, no longer blonde, but the black slash red thing he had in there is like, why was he blonde? <laughs> uh, Ash and Hawk's ending is almost as abrupt as Kageha's ending in the first title, but honestly, most of them are kind of abrupt in here. He's also not one of the main characters in this title, so anyway, it, it makes sense that I don't feel as bad. It's like, oh, this was shit. The anime I was alluding to before was Code Geass. It's not as good, and it's nowhere near as big in scale, but also no weird additions like in the second season. So I was like, that's something I liked it a lot. I thought it was fucking cool. Uh, overall, I had a lot of fun, right? It's uh, kind of weird sometimes. I think there was a lot of times where it felt like there was some padding, which is weird because I think both these combined are maybe like 20 hours long. Uh, like I said before in Title 1, there was a lot of shit where it's like the last 20% to 30% fucking went on. It's like this is boring as hell. The ending had no differences between them like except like uh, the red hair guy. And that's because his whole thing branched out completely different. Like Hage, right? And yeah, that's basically it.